There are calls for the New South Wales government to rethink proposed reforms, which some warn could exacerbate the housing crisis. As New South Wales political reporter Julia Bradley explains, some of the state's most vulnerable people could be impacted. 23-year-old university student Erin Norris has called her caravan home since October. Looked into renting and renting was just way out of the picture of while I was at uni, it was way too expensive. Living at the back of her parents' property on the New South Wales central coast, Erin's family helped her purchase the caravan so that her three younger sisters could one day have the same option. Liz, we've definitely discussed, we'd all like to eventually own our own homes, but to be able to even think about doing that, you'd have to earn over $100,000 a year, which... As even just coming out of uni is next to impossible. But backyard caravan living may soon be wrapped in red tape. Under proposed legislative changes, if someone is living in a caravan connected to power and water for longer than six months, or if the caravan exceeds 20 square metres, they'd need council approval. It'd be drastic for so many people, like even just people my age, but also say like my grandparents sort of age, it'd be detrimental to so many people's ability to have a house that's safe. Recently engaged, Mitchell Pryor and Tamar Felch are doing the same thing to save for a wedding and a house deposit. It'll impact us directly if we also then go to sell um, when we're ready to you know, move out and buy a home. Um, the market for people wanting something like this will be a lot smaller, so uh, it'll make our job harder than, um, than it needs to be as well. If the proposed changes come into effect, it would represent the biggest shake-up of such planning laws in three decades. But there are questions over whether now is the right time as New South Wales battles a housing crisis. We're not against uh, updating legislation, um, but definitely a lot more work needs to be done. Uh, as the current uh, proposal is, it will be... Uh, associated with the housing crisis. It will just make the housing crisis even worse. New South Wales Planning Minister Paul Scully says the changes wouldn't be retrospective and people wouldn't need a development application, rather it would be a quicker process. Sky News understands fees would vary between councils. A statement reads, in a time where we are increasingly seeing tiny homes and movable dwellings become permanent secondary residences, we also want to provide our councils with peace of mind when planning for local amenities and infrastructure. Well, look, the government's got to be careful not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Every person's home is their castle, whether that's a caravan or whether that's a harbour side mansion. People impacted by natural disasters would be exempt from the changes, which are part of a broader review to improve safety and mitigate flood risk at caravan parks. The New South Wales government is reviewing submissions from the first phase of proposed changes. More reforms will be considered later this year. Julia Bradley, Sky News, Sydney.